God's a good God and the devil's a bad devil. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Let's give our young people a hand clap. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, turn to Psalm chapter number 9. One verse this morning, if you'd be so kind to stand as we read the Word of God together. Psalm chapter number 9 and verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all nations that forget God, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord God, that your word abideth forever. You said heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word will abide forever. Now, Father, let it be found abiding in our hearts. Let it be found abiding in our mouths, Lord God. Let it be found abiding in our minds, Lord God. And, Father, we know that faith comes by hearing. Let it be found in our hearing, Father, that we may do what you've called us to do, that we would do things greater than we could ever imagine. Father, by your word and by your power that lies within your word, we are able to do all things because it is Christ that strengthens us. It's we within not ourselves but God it's you it's all about you and Lord we give it all to you today Father we ask that you move in our midst Lord God Lord that you draw people to you Lord God Lord that we not leave here with anything undone we not leave here with anything unclean Lord that we not leave here with anything unrevealed by your spirit in the name of Jesus and the church said Amen, Amen. you may be seated this morning, this, this message has a two-fold application. Number one, I pray that this message will touch those that are lost and undone without Jesus. The number second part of this message, I pray that it reminds us who are born again of why Jesus gave us the commission to preach the gospel. There is much at stake, friends. The psalmist said the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. I want you to know before I get into the message today, you really need to pray about our upcoming election. I don't care what party you affiliate yourself with. That's irrelevant. But what you need to know that any nation that forgets God will be turned into hell. I didn't say that. That's what God said. That's why we need godly leaders. That's why, that's why we need godly influence in the Congress and in the Senate. That's why we need them in our local courthouse. That's why we need them even in our city council. We need godly men and women who will stand on the word of God. Because if not our nation will be turned into hell. And I know hell is not a very popular subject. It's not one that's preached that often. Now I understand that I shouldn't preach hell every week to people that are born again. But we must not ever assume just because you are in the house of God today that you are born again. I know that hell is not mentioned much and, and many today and, and, and many a message that will be preached across the world today, hell will be a foreign subject in many uh, topics. And it's not one that we like to, like I say, that we overemphasize, but we kiss one that we cannot ignore. Me as a gospel minister, I would be an unfaithful Minister of that word if I did not preach hell. Amen. I would be unbalanced in my mission and in my call if I did not mention hell. I would be no more than a harling. And a harling cares nothing for the sheep. You know, today if you, you're encouraged, if you know something, whether it be a, 
a, a terrorist attack or whether it be some kind of plot in our schools or anything that we are, know that can bring harm to others, we are encouraged to reveal that to those that could be in danger. And friend, today we know that those that are the wicked will be turned into hell. And that's why the Bible tells us in Ephesians, or I'm sorry, in the Colossians, that we are to warn every man of this reality that you cannot escape the, the horrors of hell without Jesus and without being born again. Hell is a real place where real people go that reject a real God. In the same way, if we truly say we love people, it is our bound duty to warn them of the reality of hell that awaits those that have never given their life to Jesus. Hell is a horrible place. I believe that we have forgot the reality of how hell will be for those that reject God. Hollywood and, and Hollyweird and Hollywood, whatever you want to call it, they, do, they produce mass amounts of horror and demonic all kinds of, and today we, we, we are so desensitized to killings and seeing people maimed and lamed and, and murdered in war in the streets. We, we all have access to it like we've never had before. And I think that we have become so numb to seeing the horrors of the world that we live in. We've also dumbed down the horror that waits those that will fall in the place called hell. Hell is real. And that's something you should know. It's not a state of mind. It's not something that you endure here on earth. It's not a place that you go and you burn up and that's it. Hell is real. And the Bible makes it very clear that hell is real. Jesus himself affirmed the reality of hell. He said in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5 is often noted for the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. But Jesus said in Matthew 5, 21 and 22, now listen. He said, you've heard that it was said by them of old time that thou shalt not kill, and whoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of this judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell far. And he goes on and he says, If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. Uh, because it's better to enter the kingdom of God uh, main than it is to enter hell whole. There's many people today that have not dealt with their eyes, not dealt with their hands, and chose hell as their eternity. Amen. He said because you can, it's better to, to enter there than whole with a whole body and being cast into hell. He goes, Jesus says also, he said, don't fear only what man can do to you. Because man can only destroy your body. But he said, fear the one that can destroy the body and turn your soul in to hell. Jesus made it very clear of the reality of this hell that it is a real place. Once again, that real people go that reject a real Jesus. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read all scripture this morning. But in this real place of hell, the Bible tells us the, is where the worm 
dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. No, when I was a heathen, and when I was a heathen, I was a good one. I mean, I was a hell raiser, if you don't mind me saying so. I don't take no pride in it. I'm ashamed of how I used to live. But glory to God. There's a man named Jesus. That when he came, he took all that mess away. But when I was a heathen, I would say things like, uh, people, you know, a heathen say dumb stuff to one another. Like we would tell one another, won't you just go to hell? And when they would say that to me, I would say stupid stuff like, uh, uh, well, I would, but they're afraid I'd get, I'd, be, get kick, I'd get kicked out for bootlegging ice water. Or the devil won't let me in because he's afraid I'll take over. How foolish. But that's what heathens, that's what ignorant people say. That's what people who are lost will say. But in reality, I was scared to go to hell. And I knew that's where I would go. I was not ignorant about my plight. And it behooves me today that so many people sit and hear the word of God. Know the reality of hell. But yet they choose not to do anything about it. When you get to hell, it'll be too late to do anything about it. The worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. And he goes on to say once again, and Mark tells the same account about your eye. Pluck it out. Cut your hand off. Because this fire is never quenched. Paul affirmed that hell was real. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, he said, In the flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let me tell you, friend, this morning, it's not all about your wicked living that will cause you to go to hell. It ain't about the drinking. It ain't about the drugs. It ain't about the whoremongering. It ain't about all the, the pornography. The fact that you go to hell is because you rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the carousing, the wicked living is all a result of denying this man named Jesus. Can you say Amen. Amen. It's not one particular sin. It's denying Jesus will cause you to be turned into hell. John, he wrote about hell in Revelation. And he said, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake afar. And then he says in Revelation 21 and 8, he said, but the fearful, unbelieving, unbelieving, there it is, the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. These scriptures set forth that hell is a very real place. It's a place of real torment. It's a place that you and I cannot deny. If you and I deny the reality of hell, then we have to deny the reality of the scripture. We have to deny the reality that Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. If you deny the reality of hell, then you've denied the very essence of the gospel. And yes, I can I understand. Many of you say it's about the abundant life. I understand all about the abundant life. Uh, many of you can live a good life here and still miss heaven. Can you say amen? You can be a good church member. You can be a good tither. You can be a good Sunday school student. You can be a good person and still make hell your eternity. Somebody say amen to me. The reality of hell. To deny it would make invalid the atonement that Jesus made for you and I. Also, you need to know about hell. 
is a place of total darkness. Jesus said in Matthew 25 and 30, And to cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, and there should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus made this place, made it understand that we would know this place is total darkness. And you know, you can take some of the most vile people, put them in many of our servicemen and even women have probably been put into captivity and been tortured and put in places of total darkness. And when those in hardened criminals, those in, in penitentiaries, when they get out of control, they put them in solitary confinement. They put them in places of total darkness. Because even the strongest, most vile person, and you put them in a place of total darkness, in a matter of days or a matter of weeks, they become completely mad. They completely will lose all sense of reality of who they are and even why they're where they are. But the thing about solitary confinement, you can get out. The thing about even being captured maybe by the enemy, at some time you can be let out. But there is no exit in this place called hell. And if there was, you'd never find it because it's too dark. Anybody in here ever been to Mammoth Cave? And they take you down and they take you into that big room. And they say that's where they used to have church. I tell you what, that minister was pretty smart. And he said that before the service would start, he would gather everybody's lanterns. He didn't have nobody getting up and going to the bathroom. He didn't have nobody ducking out early. They stayed till the service was over. If he preached two hours, if he preached all day, because they couldn't get out. Can you say amen? But on that tour, they, they turn out the lights. And it's literally so dark in that hole that you cannot even see your hand right in front of your face. It's a darkness that you can literally feel. But there, they turned the lights back on. Listen this morning. Listen to me all over this place. If you don't know Jesus, you do not want to go to hell. You don't want to run the risk of spending eternity in hell. Think about that this morning. Absolute darkness. And many of you this morning are afraid of the dark in your own homes. You have to have a TV on, a light on, or something to even go to sleep. No wonder Jesus said they'd be weeping and gnashing of teeth in this place called hell. Because it is a place that's real. It's a place of outer darkness. And it is a place of eternal fire. In Matthew 25, Jesus also says that the curse were cast into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. See, hell was not prepared. For you and I. But those that reject God. You will have your part. In that place. Now you think about it for a minute. Most people in here has got burned at some point in your life. And even in that brief moment of having your hand. Or something. Any, any of your physical body close to a flame. Within a second you begin to recognize the pain associated with that fire. That's one second. Can you imagine eternity in hell? The first reaction is to get away from that flame. But once again, I have to tell you, 
there is no place to get out of hell. How did that feel when you burnt yourself? The pain was very real and very intense. Your body will be in that torment forever. That's why the rich man asked Abraham, Would you send Lazarus just to put a drop of water on my tongue? Because I am in this place of torment. And the next thing you need to know about hell, that you will be in the company of some of the most vile, most wicked. You'll be in, in company with the very devil himself. Uh, you'll be in the company of every demon that's ever no, that man has ever known. Every murderer, every rapist, every terrorist, every wicked person. The very people that you tell your kids to stay away from. The very ones you tell them to watch out for. Every child molester that it's not repentant. Every person that you tell your children and tell yourself to stay away from, Amen. they'll be there. And the reality is there'll be nice people there. There'll be good people there. But once again, the very people that you try to avoid now, try to protect yourself from now, they will be in hell. With you. And the next thing about hell. It's full of memory. And regret. Go back to the rich man again. After he requested that drop of water and was denied. Abraham said, rememberest thou... Rememberest thou in your life how you had good things? I'm telling you, every person that is in hell at this moment, they are remembering every opportunity that they had to come to Jesus. They're remembering every sermon that was ever preached. They're remembering every song of invitation that was ever sung. They're remembering every time that they knew that they needed to come to Jesus, and yet they denied, yet they rejected the very call. Hell is full of people with bad memories of how they did not have to be there. No person in hell could ever say that they didn't know. How many times have you rejected Jesus? Now once again, if you're born again this morning, I hope this stirs you. To warn those people that are lost. Because you and I encounter people every day that are on their way to hell. You've encountered some this morning. If you stopped and got gas, if you stopped and got Pop Tarts, if you stopped and got breakfast, you've encountered people that are on their way to hell. All these things. Just simply add to the agony of hell. The memory. And the rich man cried out and said, Go send Lazarus back that he may go warn my five brethren. Because if they don't change, if they don't come to you, God, they are going to end up in this place of torment. The place that I am. See, because place, hell is a place of eternal separation. You'll be eternally separated from God. The presence of God. The drawing of God. The convicting of God. You'll be eternally separated. That's why Jesus said, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God 
and you yourselves thrust out. Once again, you are eternally separated from God, eternally separated from Jesus, and all the splendors of heaven you will miss. All the things that we talk about, the grandeur of how wonderful heaven will be, you will miss out. And not only that this morning, I want you to think about how you will be eternally separated from your family that called upon Jesus. Many of you will be separated from your children. Many of you will be separated from your parents. Many of you will be separated from close friends because you rejected Jesus. What a terrible thought to think. That you could be separated from your children. Parents don't give up. Hound them if you have to. Don't let them forget about the reality of hell. A good friend of mine. His mother preached to him for 15 years. Every time the minute he walked through the door, she would start in on him. But today that man is born again and on his way to heaven. Don't give up on your kids. Young people, don't give up on your parents. Don't give up on your friends. Don't give up on your family. When you quit warning them, that's when you've given up on them. Can you say amen? Amen. And lastly, I want you to know this morning that hell is for eternity. Let that sink in. You and I can't imagine eternity. Because as we looked at last week, we measure everything in time. But eternity is not bound by time. In Revelation 20, 10, it says, And they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. You know, for someone makes a mile, makes to 100 years old, we, we see that as a great feat, in which it is. But 100 years, and there's really no way to even compare it, but 100 years would be like me taking a drop of water and dropping it in the Atlantic Ocean. A hundred years compared to eternity. You need to let that sink in this morning. And I don't know who needs to hear this. I don't know who needs to get their life right with God this morning. I don't know who needs to come to Jesus for the first time today. But I know this. I have warned you. I have told you the reality of hell. I have told you of how it would be a place of outer darkness and how you would be separated from God and how it is real and how it is a place of torment and how it is forever and ever. But it's a place that you don't have to go to. It's a place that you can bypass. Jesus made a way. Can you say amen? Now let me preach to you if I can. See, Jesus came and they asked him and his mission was this, to to come and to seek. And not only seek, but to save that which was lost. That was his mission. That's why he came. That's why he preached. That's why he calls men and women into the ministry to warn those, to tell people that Jesus is still seeking and he's still saving that which was lost. That's why Jesus went to Calvary. That's why Jesus said, no man takes my life but I give it freely why did he give it so you could be redeemed and so you don't have to go to this place called hell you can escape the horrors of hell but there's just one way and his name is Jesus today I want you to know that if you leave this planet today 
without Jesus, your next moment will be in hell. There is no purgatory. There's no place of holding. There is no soul sleep. You will go. It's, it's worse than playing Monopoly. You won't pass go. You will go straight into a place of eternal torment. And it only will get worse after you spent years and thousands and thousands of years in this place called hell. You're going to be called up and you're going to stand before God. And God is going to begin to judge you on your works. But the bottom line is your judgment will be based on the fact that you did not accept Jesus you won't have an advocate there standing with you you'll be on your own and then after all of that you the devil the hell and grave will all be cast into the lake afar which is the second death see God's math is not like our math that's why he told Nicodemus you must be born again Everybody in this room has been born at least once or you wouldn't be in this room. But you must be born again of the Spirit. If you're born once, you die once. You only die the physical death. You will not face the second death. But if you're only born once, Of the flesh. Then you die twice. You die the physical. And you die the second death. Which is everlasting torment. In this lake of fire. That wasn't prepared for you. Jesus. Said in John 14. If I go away. I'll prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Jesus, and I've heard this preached nine ways from Sunday. People talk about Jesus with a little tool belt up there, hammering nails, building you a mansion. Get out of my face with that nonsense. Jesus was a carpenter here on earth. Let me tell you how. He prepared that place for you. That you can escape. Once again, hell was prepared for the devil and all his angels. It was not prepared for you. And Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you for you and that where I am you may be there also Jesus uh, after he come off the cross uh, after he was laid in the belly of the earth for three days after he went down and he preached liberty to the captives that were being held in Abraham's bosom Jesus rose from the dead and he told Mary do not touch me because I've not yet uh, ascended to my father and Jesus I don't know exactly when he did it but after he told Mary that and before he seen the disciples because he tells Thomas put your hand in my side put your fingers in my nail press somewhere between that and there Jesus went into glory and he walked in to the holy place in heaven and he took his own blood and he laid it upon the mercy seat that you can be redeemed have you been washed in the blood of Jesus What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's why Jesus is called our high priest. That's why he's called the great apostle. Because he took his own blood. No more the blood of bulls and goats. And Jesus came back. And he left these words. He said, go and tarry into Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. Because I need you to be a witness. I need you to be a witness of me. Don't try to do it on your own power. But you wait for the promise.
they receive this power, they receive this anointing. And they go out and they begin to preach the wonderful works of God. And men begin to cry out as their hearts were pricked. Brethren, what must we do? And Peter says, repent every one of you. And be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because he said, this same Jesus whom you crucified. It wasn't the Roman soldiers. They were just the instruments. But it was you. It was me. That put Jesus on the cross. But now. It's up to you. And it's up to me. To warn the the others. Warn the lost. The world. Of this reality. Of this place called. Hell. I want you to stand with me this morning. And I don't. Young people. This is not the time to be running to the bathroom. I want you to go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you to remain in that state.